Hello, everybody. I'm Barb Alvarez with Church by the Sea. Welcome to our self-care lunch and learns. We have a great class for you today. We are going to learn about happy foods and happy moods with our guest. And I can't wait to introduce her to you. But before I do, let me just make a few announcements. Um, we have self-care lunch and learns every Friday happening in the month of October and even one in the month of, um, November. They always happen at the same exact time, one o'clock on Fridays. Uh, today is happy food, happy mood. Our next one will be mindfulness next Friday and like that. They'll go on and on, and they're all great classes, so we hope to see you. Also, on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and on Thursdays at 10 a.m., we have our re-employment webinar workshops that we hope you will attend or at least tell someone if you know they need it. And basically, it's all about how to get out there and get a job right now. And believe it or not, there are opportunities, even in this pandemic. Okay, so without much ado, or, or is that how you say it? Uh, let's not waste any more time. How about that? Before I introduce you to our special guest, Chef Dulce. She is a graduate of the uh, Dr. Sears Wellness Institute with a certification in health coaching. She has uh, graduated from the Life Transformational Program from the Hippoc Hippocrates Health Institute with uh, uh, having learned the art of raw vegan cuisine. And she is also a graduate of the Johnson and Wales University. She is a cooking teacher and a workshop leader. And what she gives us basically, and she gives all of her audience is information on how to eat yummy food and still take care of your body. Thank you, Dulce, for being with us. Take it away. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. You're going to make me cry saying those things, but I am super excited to be here today. This is a great opportunity for me to do what I love and also to teach you and spread the word of that there are happy foods for happy moods. And the class today is all about that. I was um, introduced to nutrition for my own health uh, concern, right? I was almost 300 pounds many years ago. It was like 10 years ago. And I was suffering and diagnosed, not suffering because I, I never suffered about that. I was diagnosed with um, two chronic illnesses. And me being a professional chef, I said, oh my God, what am I doing? And I decided to start changing my diet and my lifestyle. And this is what I, why I became so passionate about doing this for myself and for others. And I'm going, I, I have started cooking because we have a lot of things to do today. You're going to receive a full package with a menu. So don't be worried to take notes about what am I doing or if you lost track of what I'm putting in the pan. But you have also two views that you're going to be seeing what I'm doing. So the menu that I'm doing today, every ingredient will enhance the happy hormones, right? Because that is the goal, to eat food for good health. Eat that will enhance your health, not to weigh you down. And um, so let me ask a question. Do you think, or anybody here think or believe that Foods can really enhance your mood and make you happy. Can we ask, can I ask questions about that and then somebody respond? You can absolutely ask questions and every guy, and guys, please feel free to respond in the Q&A box. Use that little Q&A box to respond or ask questions. So the question is, do you believe that mood can, uh, or food can affect your mood? Well, I'll answer myself, uh, uh, Dulce. I for sure uh, believe that because just yesterday, I had some food that left me feeling really awful in the afternoon. And I kept thinking, what is wrong with me? And then I remembered, oh, I yeah. ate something that wasn't great. Um, DJ says, yep, food can 
uh, affect mood. And so does it. Right? Yes. So our audience is definitely thinking that that is true. Tell us what so you're So you are my kind of audience. I love that. So I did experience that for myself. I was eating for comfort and looking for love, right? <laughs> and um, we all talk about food in terms of comfort. Oh, comfort food, yummy, and make me feel good. Or, or remembering when you have a dish, you remember your grandma or your mother's, right? So yes, food does contribute to our mood. But not only because of that, because research and doctors have also agreed and made many, many studies about that. And so a little bit about a background, you know, food is fuel and everything we put in our mouth will affect our body. Every food we eat will affect any function of our body. And it, it also affects our biochemistry. I'm going to be looking at my notes because I have so many things in my head that I want to share with you, but I want to make sure I give you the key points, right? And I don't overload you information or I miss something important. So I'm going to be once in a while taking a, a peek at my notes. Hope you don't mind. Dulce, so, tell us what you have in the pan. Tell us what you yeah. have in the pan. And aromatics, which are onions and garlic. And this is the base to make the main entree of today. I'm making the main entree, which is farro risotto and with salmon. And this farro, this is the thing I wanted to say about me. Everything I cook is plant-based and I add a small or minimum amount of animal protein. So everything I'm using is plant-based. Um, the liquid is, the liquids I use are baby stock and the water, our plant-based butter. And yes, I do add the protein, uh, the animal protein, if the person wants to, but it's honestly not necessary. We're going to add salmon today. And while I add these ingredients, I'm going to be also telling you a little bit about them. So I want you to ensure that eating for good health or eating healthy or eating for happy moods is not the only thing that will support you with you know, mental health. I want to be very, very clear about this. This is a complement of having an optimal health, and that includes our mental health. So it, it, it's a complement. And there's other things that will also make you happy, which is exercise and sleep, having great relationships, right? Enjoy what you do, be passionate about your work. So other things will also. However, my specialty is the food, right? And that's what I'm talking about today. And for me, honestly, it's, I don't want to say a percentage, but if I'm going to be biased, it's 80%, 90%, <laughs> maybe. Um, so yes, it does include uh, influence, influence the, the, what, you, what you feel and your emotions. So that's why I created this special class. And the goal of every ingredient, there's one goal, is to enhance, increase, or tell the body to create those happy hormones, which are the serotonin and um, uh, the tryptophan in your body, which is an amino acid, but I don't want to go into nutrition warnings and stuff, but the dopamine, so those hormones that are created by our body, the brain creates it with the signals that the neurotransmitter sends to the brain, right? So. The only way to create those things is sending good messages. And the good messages you send by activating those enzymes and those amino acids in the body with what you're eating. Also, the other stuff that I mentioned before. So, and that is the main goal. To accomplish that, I am going to use the foods that are high on those amino acids, okay? So let's start with, I'm using onions and garlic, which are potent, potent uh, heaters, and I'm adding them with mushrooms. Mushrooms are filled with vitamin D. Vitamin D are known to be a creator of happiness, right? The sun, but also it really affects the creation or, or the stimulant to create tryptophan, which is, in, which is an amino acid that create and help to create the serotonin. So everything that we're eating, it does have the science back, uh, backing it up, right? 
So let me stop here. So I have cooked, I'm trying to teach you and also cooking. So I have cooked onion, garlic, and mushrooms, right? This is the base for my risotto. And risotto is basically made with rice, and I'm going to make it with farro. Farro is an ancient grain, and I'm going to do that because you need all those plant ingredients combined with a whole grain. And farro is one of the best grains out there. It's already pre-cooked lightly. You can see it here. This is farro. And I am going to finish cooking with the other ingredients and with the vegetables. Okay? So I'm going to do about two portions here. And you will be receiving all the recipes, as I said, and the package. So you can recreate this at home. You can recreate this with any vegetables you have in your fridge and also with brown rice which is also amazing. So I'm going to cook the farro a little bit with the onions and the garlic and the mushrooms. All of these are already nutrients and ingredients that are supporting your happy mood, right? So all these ingredients that I have in here that you see contain vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients that will help you to increase or influence your mood, right? But not only that, I also believe that the food that is good, that I made at home with love, are also a very good, not, not influencer, but yes, food that excites you, makes you happy. Like you just said, Barbara, you ate a food that didn't go well with you, and then you today you don't feel good. You don't feel good today. So I am adding vegetable stock, instead of adding oil, I add vegetable stock or water to my food to avoid them to dry up. And also, the risotto needs some liquid to be creamy. So I'm cooking the risotto to make it creamy. If you know about risotto, risotto is a classical dish from Italy, and it's made with a bowl of rice and is very creamy, but this is my interpretation of risotto. This is not obviously a um, traditional one. So this is my interpretation of the risotto. And I'm making it with a farro, and I'm going to make a cream with cashew cream. With cashew, I'm sorry, I already did it. The cashew cream is going to be the creaminess of mimicking what, um, what is in the traditional risotto, which is a lot of butter, right? And I want to put a lot of butter, so I'm going to make it yummy with a cashew cream. Chef Dulce, we have a question. Uh, someone is asking how you spell faro, and I've looked it up for you. Uh huh. Go ahead. It's F A R R O. Mm hmm. Actually, it's R O. Okay, F A R O. Oh, okay. You might find it, but actually, I have it here. I can show it to you. Actually, no, you're right. It's too hard. I'm sorry. So, okay. It's too hard. Yes, you're right. Here it is. It's an ancient grain. It's full of fiber. And one of the things that the researchers and doctors and everybody who is studying the effects of food in our body and our mood is that you get to be happier when your gut is happy, what they call the gut brain, right? So all these things that we're creating today are also giving you a lot of fiber in your body to make your gut happy, right? So that's why most of the plant-based food, and actually all of the plant-based foods, I'm not most, <laughs> but when you have a mostly plant-based food diet, better chances you have to have happy moods, right? And to feel better than instead of a piece of steak with just a little bit of a vegetable on the side. And that is my specialty. My specialty is plant forward, which is mostly plants, but you can also add a little bit of, you know, animal uh, products or animal proteins in your meals. And it starts it start by changing the way you see and create your meals and your menus. And a very good example is that we traditionally look at what kind
time or meal we're going to eat, right? We're going to eat chicken today, we're going to eat a piece of steak or turkey, whatever, and then what things we're going to put on the side, right? And there's not a lot of thought of the side dishes. So the plant forward cuisine invites you to look at things different in different perspective, right? So what are the dishes that you're going to create utilizing all those ingredients that are good for you, like the ones that we're talking today, right? And then if you want, and if you're not vegan, you're not vegetarian, you can add a small amount of animal protein. So again, um, I'm doing two dishes here, the fado risotto, which has vegetables in it. It has onions, garlic, mushrooms, and I'm going to add some spinach, right? I'm going to add spinach. A spinach are an all leafy green. So as I said, every ingredient I'm putting in here is because it's going to help you with your mood. So spinach and leafy greens have magnesium, folic acid, which is also a key, uh, a key ingredient in our body, if you want to say ingredient, right? To create those happy hormones that we want in our life. And if you can see, I have more vegetables in here that farrow, right? So it's also important to make the vegetables the stars of the dish, right? And actually the risotto, the traditional risotto, you don't put any veggies in it. So I hope there's no Italian that I'm offending today. <laughs> because this is not at all traditional risotto, okay? This is an interpretation of the risotto. And this is, this is the, one of the things that have made a big change in my life. As I said before, I was diagnosed with two different illnesses, uh, chronic diseases, and I was so stressed. I went to visit a friend of mine, she's a yoga teacher, and she told me, oh, I was diagnosed with psoriasis too, and I started to do Ayurvedic diet. Ayurvedic diet is a very ancient diet, uh, follow it follow it mostly in India, right? And you're a chef, you can do this. And I said, hmm, okay, let me try. And I started seeing the changes. And guys, that has been like 10 years ago. I have never ever been in traditional treatment or any treatment for those conditions that I was diagnosed. So look how beautiful this is. This is the farrow. I don't wanna, you know, smash the grains a lot. So I'm gentle cooking it and also a low fire. So it started getting happy with the vegetables, right? And getting a little bit soft because I pre-cooked it, but I, I left it very al dente, which is, uh, you know, not too soft or a little bit hard to the tooth, which is al dente meat, right? Dulce, oh I just want to let you know that we're, uh, it's 120 now because you asked me to oh. give you time checks. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to add cashew cream. This is very simple to make. And this is an opportunity for you to, to learn that you can create sauces and dressings with seeds and nuts, which are also full of nutrients for happy moods, right? And I'm going to add squeeze or two or three of the cashew cream. This is simple cashews that have been soaked overnight in water and I put in the refrigerator to soften them and to make them easier to digest. And the next day I rinse and I clean them and I put it in a blender and I add some yummy uh, seasoning. And one of the seasonings that I'm using is miso. Miso is a paste that crea is created by fermenting uh, soy. In this case, chickpeas, because I am not using a lot of soy in my diet. So this is a great complement because fermented foods are good for our gut, right? So this Fermented food is one of the ingredients and one of the foods that we want to include in our diet. So I'm adding it into the sauce that we're, that we're um, adding into our risotto. You can see now that it's getting creamier. Oh, I, hope, I wish you can smell it too, right? The aromas are amazing. That's what I 
name my company Dulce Aromas. Right? Because when I cook, I, I cook for people in their homes usually, and that's exactly what, how I started cooking most of the, my days with individual cooking for individuals and families that are in remission of illnesses or in prevention of illness. And I heal their homes with these aromas all the time. Miss uh, Chef Dulce, we have a question. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, the recipes will be sent to you. Yes, we can. If you'd like, you can put your uh, email in the in the Q and A box, and I will be happy to send you the recipes. But we will post these. Um, I'm actually thinking maybe to post them on either the newsletter or the church website. But we will figure out a way to get these recipes to you. If you want, you can put your email in the Q and A, and we'll send them to you. Um, yes. But the other question is, Dulce, these ingredients, are they easy to find at the supermarket? Yes, guys. We're talking about mushrooms. We're talking about garlic and onions and spinach and farro. Yes, farro, which is here. And you can find this in whole food and even in publics. Nothing that I'm giving you today is complicated, guys. And actually, it's not even new. Because even our grandma used to tell us, eat your veggies. And that's exactly what I'm telling you today. Basically, eat your veggies. Try to look at vegetables, not as side dishes. I'm going to play the farrow. You see, it's already done. I actually season with a little bit of salt and pepper, and I taste it. Because you need to taste your food. Taste at the beginning taste in the middle and taste at the end. I am not tasting a lot because I have, I have eaten my microphone sometimes with this, but my suggestion is for you to taste all the time. Let me put this in the back. I'm sorry, I'm giving you my bag, put my stove in the back. Okay, so I have plated the main, part of the main dish with cheese or farro risotto. Traditional risottos are very wet, and when I do this to the pan, to the to the plate, if I'm doing a traditional risotto, it will spread all over. But this one is a little bit more uh, dry, right? Because that's the way I want it for today, for today's dish. Another okay? question, Chef Dulce: Can you get enough protein in a plant-based diet? Yeah, I always get that question, and I love it. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very big concern for people, which is, I don't want to say it's a myth. I don't want anybody to say that, <laughs> that I said having too much protein is a myth. It's not a myth, but it's proven that you don't need huge amounts of protein. Have you ever heard anyone protein deficiency? That's the question for all of you. Have you ever heard anyone dying of protein deficiency. Yes or no? I haven't. I haven't heard anyone. So we are more prone of have cancers, um, digestive disorders, mental illnesses, and any other disease out there, cardiovascular diseases, than protein deficiency. And yes, you can get them from plant because protein is not actually one main ingredient. Protein is created by several amino acids in your, in your stream and also is something that you can get combining different ingredients. That's why when I cook plant-based foods, I will not make you just a spinach or just a piece of broccoli. I combine several plant ingredients in one meal. For example, in that risotto, you have four different vegetables, right? And also you have cashews and you have miso and you have um, yummy stuff that besides making it delicious, is going to contribute to your protein. If we calculate each gram of protein and also even in your dessert, you will have some protein there, right? If you need big amounts of protein, for example, in my case right now, I'm trying to build muscle because um, I need more muscle to carry my job <laughs> and to leave all the pots and pans that I need to, right? So I am adding a vegan protein into my daily uh, routine and my, my daily diet. So, will that answer your question? I think so. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the salmon. We're going to have a um, small piece of salmon, as you see, it's maybe four ounces of salmon. And salmon is rich in omega-3 omega fatty acid, which is essential to your health and to create serotonin. Serotonin, I think it is, right? And hopefully I'm pronouncing it well. Yes, my serotonin. Yes. English is serotonin. English is not my first language, it's my second language. My family is Dominican and Cuban. So I put a little bit of Caribbean in all my dishes. So I have season, pre seasoned the salmon with salt and pepper and harissa spice. In this day, I bought it done. This is a very good one. It's the only one that I recommend that I use and I like. I don't advertise any color, guys, to make it very clear. These are things that I use and that I love. I season it with that slightly and because I like it a little bit spicy. And you're going to have the recipe to make harissa at home. It's very simple. Red peppers, chili peppers, garlic, and a little bit of oil. So, and Broccoli is also a leafy green vegetable, which is full with phytonutrients and micronutrients that are going to help you and also give you more fiber for your gut. So if you see, I like to peel it a little bit, right? I peel it and I cut it like in four pieces and I'm going to cook it right next to my salmon. I did sear the salmon a little bit in all sides first and then I'm going to finish it in the oven. And I fish are very scary for a lot of people. But fish is one of the easiest things to cook. Trust me, it's easy. What happens is that a lot of people are not used to it. They're afraid of burning it or, or, or eating it raw or cooking it incorrectly. And also the stinginess in the house. I know because a lot of my clients say, I don't like when you cook fish or when I cook fish. I'm going to give you three ideas. Cook it outside in your grill. Buy a small gas like this, little gas stove. Cook it outside. Also, you can cook it in a pouch made with parchment paper. You season your fish, you put the veggies in there, the aromatics, which are herbs and spices and garlic and onion, whatever you want, depends on the flavors you want to give to the fish, and bake it in the oven and buy a lot of candles, open the windows. <laughs> so, but it's more important to eat for good health than the rest, right? And the things that might not have that much importance. So I'm gonna put my stove here, oopsie, and I'm going to have my salmon just a few minutes in the oven. And just before the salmon is done, I'm going to add on top a compound butter. You can see in the screen. This is very easy to make, guys. And as I said, every component I'm putting in my dish has a health purpose. This has red chili peppers, which are also full of nutrients. This has um, garlic, a little bit of the miso that I already showed you, right? And you can make compound butter with whatever flavors you want. You mix it in a food processor, and you put whatever ingredients you want to give a flavor, and you make a roll, um, or you can put it in here. I have here more in this little container, and I freeze it. But I like to make a roll, like a log, and then when you're gonna use it, you cut it in little um, coin size, and then you put it on top of your food. I'm going to put it on top of my salmon right now. Right. Question, question, Dulce. The it's, compound butter, did you make it using regular butter? Because that's an animal product. Yes, because it's an animal product, more than likely I will use regular butter. But most of the time I do it with plant-based butter. There's two plant-based butter. One is made with coconut and the other one is made, um, I think, with that combination of other ingredients. Right? I prefer the coconut one. So yeah, because you put it in a, in a, in a um, if I would do a vegan burger to put on top of my farro risotto, I will put a vegan butter, definitely, right? If you're gonna make the entire dish vegan. So right now I'm putting it in my salmon. I let this salmon cook a little bit. And then almost at the end, when I think it's ready, it's gonna be ready, I'm going to put the, it was it melted a little bit, but 
but when you get it from the freezer, you just put your little medallion of um, butter, and also I will put a little bit into the broccoli, because who doesn't like broccoli with a little bit of butter, right? Dulce, I just want to let yeah. you know that it's 1.30 because you asked me to give you time check. Yes, yeah, thank you. I can't believe it how time flies. <laughs> mm -hmm. It goes so fast, right? When you're having fun. Okay, so I give you some tips for the salmon. I wanted to say that because there is, there is a very common concern about cooking fish. I love halibut. I love all kinds of fish, and I cook a lot of fish. I am not vegan myself, but I am plant forward. I use very little animal products in my entire meal and in my entire day, right? But I do use it. So we added uh, mushrooms, and which is full of vitamin D, and has antidepressant components. Uh, also the leafy greens that has vitamin C, B6, I'm sorry, vitamin B6, which is, you know, is one of the, the vital parts of converting um, tryptophan, tryptophan into serotonin, right? Yes, serotonin. tryptophan, yes. Tryptophan into serotonin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so vitamin C, what, the, the vitamin C, you can actually, I mean, pineapples, and you have a pineapple here, I don't know if you can see it. Besides having a vitamin C, a lot of it, has an enzyme that are good for digestion, and this is, Awesome, because remember, gut brain is also important for happy moods and to feel good, feeling good. So now I'm going to make the salad while the fish finish cooking. So the salad components are very bright. I call it the rainbow salad, right? And I usually make it with rainbow chard. So there's three types of chard, which is the rainbow one that has a lot of colors, the red one and the white one, the sweet chard. But believe it or not, there was no rainbow chard in three places I went yesterday. So I'm going to take a friendly and very similar ingredient, which is kale. And I know people, some people are afraid of the kale because it's very like woody and hard. And what I'm going to teach you is how to tame your kale. Because kale sometimes can be a little hard and harsh on ourselves, right? So, the way I do it is I clean my kale very well with, in vinegar. And also I'm going to recommend if you're going to start putting more plants in your diet, you get to wash it well. Because even when they are organic, sometimes they put wax. And I use this product or I make my own white distilled vinegar with lemon and sometimes I rub it with uh, salt. If I'm going to eat the skin, I rub it very well with salt and also I have a brush that I use. This is new and you can see this one, how much I use for everything, right? So a brush to clean my veggies because in the skin there is a lot of mucus in the skin where you don't want to eat, um, you know, uh, bacteria. So you clean everything and wash everything well. And for kale, so I was going to give you a tip about the kale. So the kale, because it's very hard, so I cut the stems. You can just take the stems with your hands, like that, the hard stems. I use some of it in it, so it's okay. I, I really love all vegetables, thank God, and that was for me easy to transition to a better diet being a chef and then enjoying all kinds of vegetables. I don't think there's one, well, yeah, there's one. I think there's one vegetable that I don't like. Um, but I forgot the name, it's, it's Lamy. Lamy and kind of weird. I don't know the name in, in English, honestly, I forgot. So Dulce, you are taking basically the rough stem off of the yeah, kale. the rough stem, yes. correct, right? And you can do it with the, the big uh, kale, you just, it's very easy to take. So kale, you take the rough stem with the chard, and the recipe you have it with rainbow chard. I just take a piece of the stem, but then I leave most of it. Rainbow chard has different colors, like yellow, green, red, uh, orange, and all as much color as a plant ingredient has more nutrients, more vibrant. Because as I said before, guys, 
is also including those foods, but also enjoying your food, being excited. Since you see, the moment you see the plate, you're going to be excited. It has a lot of colors, a lot of textures, playing with textures too, right? So I'm going to get the kale and massage it. The massage, massaging the kale is kale care, right? So I'm going to massage the kale, not like squeeze it to kill it, but I'm going to massage it lightly. Right? If you can see it here, I'm going to press my hand in the kale and I'm going to give a little bit of massage and I have prepared a uh, light vinaigrette. And vinaigrettes are very easy to make at home also. And one of my pet peeves is buying all the dressings that people buy with so many ingredients that they don't need to be in the dressing. Guys, this is a very simple dressing and it's delicious. This is balsamic vinegar, a little bit of lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, a little piece of fresh garlic. I put fresh garlic in everything. And I don't buy the shop. I recommend you not to buy your the shop. You shop it at home, you clean it at home, you know what you're doing, you're controlling your meals and what you put in your mouth and in your body. So this is very simple. Balsamic vinegar, lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. And I'm going to add it to the kale, a little bit to the kale. And then I'm going to massage it again with the dressing on it. So every time you take a piece of that kale, you're going to have the deliciousness of the dressing in it. Okay? So that's a very, very good way to make your kale happy and contribute to your good health. So I'm going to take a little bit of the dressing out here because I think I have a lot. I usually do the dressings in a bowl and they add it to my salad in different uh, times. Depends on what salad I'm making. We just get this because we all want to eat with our eyes, right? That's why we clean our plates. And we don't want a messy plate. That's not yummy. So I'm going to put the kale first in the middle of my plate. This is just one portion, but you can do this in a big bowl for your whole family. You massage the kale. If you buy shard, you don't need to massage the shard because shard is softer. And I'm going to add radishes. Radishes are amazing. They're a little bit peppery, and I leave the skin because they the skin has a lot of nutrients, as I said before. Also, uh, cucumbers. Cucumbers are amazing for diabetes. They're, they basically water. They have a lot of fiber. All this you're having in here is full of fiber, guys, and we're making our gut happy again. And we're adding, and if you can see, I'm adding different ingredients with ferment, fermented, right? We have the miso, and we also adding. I'm also adding um, olives, and you can also add pickle veggies. So fermented foods are yogurt, uh, pickled vegetables, and like um, this. I love too kimchi, which is an Asian uh, fermented cabbage. They ferment it like under the earth, very well wrapped, and they keep it there for many, many many months, even, I don't know, years, but it might be even years. Does anybody know what is kimchi is? Kimchi, yes. It's a Korean dish. So it's amazing for your health. And you can make your own pickle vegetables. It's very, very easy to make, right? And as you see, and the last touch, you can put a little bit of the dressing with a little here. A little bit of the dressing on top of the veggies, but only dress your salad when you're ready to eat them, guys. Don't dress the salad in advance. And you know what I do? A trick that chef does. We put our plates in the refrigerator for the salad, and we put our plates for the food in the oven, so the plates start to warm. And when you receive a food, your food is hot because who wants, you know, food that is not hot? And a salad that is also warm. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of salt on top of my tomatoes and the cucumbers because those, they need a little bit of salt, but you know what, you don't have to. 
and I'm putting herbs, which is also the underdog. I have a class that is only talking about herbs and spices because people don't use it a lot. And they also have a lot, a lot of um, micronutrients and they need flavor. So if you don't like kale and you put a lot of, like if you like cilantro, I love cilantro, I put cilantro in everything, of course I'm Latin, but um, I add cilantro and herbs on my, excuse me, I'm going to get the salmon out. I add herbs in my salad, and they give you all those different notes because basil is sweet and a little bit of peppery, and I'm going to put also chives that are family of the onions and the garlic, and they give you also that granity and oniony flavor, and because chives are so easy to cut, I'm going to put it with the scissors, right, like this. I'm putting all these herbs in there. Every time you take a bite of it, you're going to have a different flavor. Okay. Yes, Lucy yeah. just uh, wanted to let you know it's uh, 142. Uh, wanted to give you the time check because we want to make sure that you have time to show us that fabulous dessert yes. you have. Thank you. And I'm going to add for more crunchiness, I'm going to add walnuts. And walnuts is out of the family of ingredients that are contributed to happiness, right? These are black walnuts. They're kind of rare to find, believe it or not. I don't, even, I don't think I can find it in Whole Foods. I find it online, but they're worth it. They taste like um, blue cheese. So it's like walnuts and blue cheese are like a made in heaven. <laughs> so black walnuts are amazing to give that ultimate flavor in your salad. So if you can see, this salad doesn't lack of anything. It has flavor, it has texture, it has something soft, it has something salty. Look how beautiful this salad is. You can also add additionals, marinated additionals. You can add a little bit of raisins if you want the, the sweetness, just a few raisins, and make it your own. You're gonna have the recipe, but I invite you to add other stuff that you have at home because as you see, I did it with kale because I had more kale and I couldn't find the, the shy. okay? So now I'm going to play our salmon. So here's the salmon, I'm gonna take this away. Our salmon is cooked and also, I don't want the broccoli to cook a lot. So I just, the broccoli a little bit roasted because I also want that crunchiness. I like to have texture in my dish. I'm going to put the salmon and I like the salmon like medium, medium well. So I'm going to plate my salmon in the middle, right? And you see all this oil? I'm not going to put the oil in or the butter actually. I'm not going to put it. And as you can see, I can take this now. Chef Dulce, we're getting some great comments. People are saying you're inspiring them to cook healthy. Oh, thank you so much. Look what a beautiful plate. Like, when you see things that are colorful and that have texture, this is what we look. You know, it will touch all your taste buds. You know, we have different 2,000 or 4,000 taste buds in our mouth, and they all change every week, and you want to excite, excite them, right? Now I'm going to put a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Please, please, guys, if you learn something from this class, don't you ever buy those bottles of <laughs> lemons. Squeeze your lemon, fresh lemon. I'm going to put lemon because fish needs a little bit of lemon, right? And I'm going to finish it with some curry, you see it has a little bit of the butter on top, and I'm gonna finish it with some curly um, chives, which also give another layer of flavor, okay? So here we have it. This is our main dish and our salad. What do you think so far? Beautiful. This is the salad. This is our main dish. Mm. You can make the salmon like to cover it a little piece of the, if you want to make it fancier, so you can cover the little piece of the broccoli stem in there. But, you know, this is for me, and I'm so sorry I didn't share it with you. That breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. It really makes me happy that I can get to you via Zoom, and it's possible. 
but also it's sad that you cannot taste that. <laughs> but um, look at this, how beautiful. So we have salmon, broccoli, sparrow, we have spinach, we have mushrooms, we have cashews. And actually, now that I mentioned that, right, let's put a little bit more of that cashew cream on top. That gives like a creaminess and tanginess. And I'm going to do it like in the broccoli and in the sparrow, not on top of my fish, because I already have my fish. Look at this thing that I mentioned, because we can put a little bit more. Okay? So now, well, that looks amazing is the comments that we're getting. Uh, thank you so much. I could watch her uh, once a month to learn new recipes. <laughs> of course. And this is something that I haven't tried. You. So it is true, guys. It is true. Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate enhances your mood, your good mood. Chocolate is a happy food for happy mood. And I'm finishing it up with a Almond Joy Chocolate Truffle. And this is my creation. I love Almond Joy, but I don't eat a chocolate bar like I used to, all of them, but not anymore. And I do my own chocolate dessert and all my own little desserts at home. And guess what? You are going to get another class to learn how to make healthy, delicious desserts in your own home. And that is going to be a very exciting class. It's October 23rd, right, Vanna? That's right. Our October 23rd Lunch and Learn is all about learning to make healthy sweets that are yummy and great for your body. Yes. yes. So this is basically almond butter with almonds, oats, and cocoa, cocoa powder. And you can also do it with a bar of dark chocolate, which is 70% cacao. And that is a good one for you. You can take a bar and blend it in your food processor with coconut and you have the recipe because your package will have all these three different recipes that we did today. You're going to get it in your package. So again, going back to the almond joy truffles, they are made very simple by mixing all these ingredients in your food processor and you in the, in the palm of your hands, you will have this like dough, right? You take it in your hands, you make form little balls and you roll it in coconut. And if you want an extra crunch, because I always looking for extra crunch and yumminess, I add salted toasted almonds in the middle. So when you bite in it, you have that crunchiness and saltiness because chocolate and salt are also a pair made in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's so many bars we have salted caramel and, and salt, yeah, and sea salt. So powdered cocoa, uh, coconut, and then I just roll it in the coconut, like so, and you get your almond joy. Homemade, you control the ingredients. There's nothing there that you don't approve. And that's why I love, love to, well, besides love eating, I love teaching you to do this at home because I like you to implement wellness in the kitchen, to create meals that are happy and make you happy and your family happy. Let me tell you, you can eat all this meal and you will not feel like sad or drowned and, or bloated. This, that also gives you and make you happy. And it's a matter of using those ingredients, combine them in a way that they look beautiful, they taste delicious, they have different textures, and they will incite you and excite you to eat it. Because the best health food and healthy food is the one that you are going to eat it, right? Doesn't matter if I give you how much I tell you. Actually, we know that, right? And we need to wear veggies. But I remember the, the salad that my grandma used to make was never like this, right? She will make lettuce, pepper, um, um, tomatoes, and cucumbers with olive oil and maybe maybe apple cider vinegar. So that was not a style that will get me excited to eat. And um, now we go to questions. Let me see if I told you everything. <laughs> we, have a, we have a question. Um, uh, someone wants to know if you used wild-caught Alaskan salmon in the recipe. 
Yes, actually I did. I use wild king salmon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I always buy the salmon a day before, no more. However, during the pandemic, guys, I tried a uh, wild fish that is immediately caught and freeze, and they were pretty good. You know, um, I will not change it like forever, but in moments that you want to save money and you also want to include more fish in your diet, statistically, people only eat fish like twice, maybe uh, a week, and mostly out. That in the restaurants, and I'm not going to not at all talk bad about my fellow chef, but the restaurants use um, ingredients that may not be the greatest for you, but they want you to love the food and come back, right? So when you make it at home, you control that. Or when you hire the chef to do it at your home, right? You know what you want, you tell this person to cook it, or you can train someone, which is something that I do. I train, if you have someone that cook in your house, I can go and train them, train them to cook for good health for you based on your specific diet. I also have a service that is a master meal plan. I do a full assessment and then I send you recipes and a package like the one that you're going to receive and then you cook it yourself with my guidance. I can also give virtual cooking classes and all this. And, and it's a way for you to really start making lifestyle changes and optimizing your ingredients in your kitchen. Oh my God, time flew. <laughs> a lot of people are becoming pescatarians. Is that healthy? Yes. Well, it's kind of what we just did. And I'm going to tell you this. There's a lot of people that are becoming vegan, but everything they're eating is packaged, right? Packaged food that you microwave. That is not healthy. If you become pescatarian and you're eating good ingredients and you're making it at home, of course. You know? And also be careful, make sure you buy a sustainable um, fish, go to the website, I don't have it on my head, but even Whole Foods will tell you. Um, there are some species that are too big and they can eat, or too old, and they eat mercury and other things in the ocean that are not too good for you. So, um, I will say to do some research on the fish that they're eating. That's right. All of those lists are available online. Uh, the best fish that are the cleanest. Uh, also, there's that dirty dozen list, which tells you which vegetables and fruit you should definitely have that are yes. organic versus conventional. There are some that you can have conventional that are not as bad, but some are very full of pesticides. And one of the other things that I hear more and more lately is that it is better to, even if you cannot buy organic and you can't buy grass fed and everything, it's better to eat whole foods than to eat, eat foods from packages. Exactly. The other thing that also, if you can buy a can or bottle or pot, of, they come in a house salmon today, because again, if you're going to stop eating healthier food because of budget, Honestly, that is not a good reason or body. Your body and your health is worth millions, thousands, billions of dollars. If you don't have health, there's nothing else. Added. This is my humble opinion. And, you know, invest in your food, invest in eating good food, whole, real food. But if you can, there's also alternatives. You don't have to buy everything organic. My rule of thumb is whatever I'm going to eat with the skin and raw, I buy it organic and I wash it really well. If there are things that I'm going to cook, you know, and I'm going to peel, sometimes I don't. And there's things that I don't compromise. For example, the fish. I will not compromise in the fish that I buy. I will invest. And yes, some fish are expensive, but they're alternative also. Frozen, can, pouch, and, and, and make it in a way that, um, you know, it didn't took me a lot of money to create this, this dish. Uh, Dulce, we're getting thank yous from our audience. Thank you so much. So um, we are going to wrap up because we are uh, running out of time, but I just wanted to go ahead and make the announcement again that we will have these self-care lunch and learns every Friday at one o'clock through the first week of November. And if you really love these, let us know and maybe we'll keep putting them on for you. 
Um, Dulce is definitely coming back to teach us how to make all those wonderful desserts and we don't, that we don't have to cut out the great almond joy. We can have it. It's just going to be better for us. And let's see what other things this recording will be available on the church website, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook. Um, we will let you know, please come back, see it again. Tell people that, you know, to come see it, send them the link. Uh, we'd like to thank our guest, Chef Dulce. You were wonderful, Dulce, and the meal looks amazing. I'm so sorry that we cannot eat it with you, but we will recreate it at home. Um, yeah. Yes. I and, <laughs> and I think that's all. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming, and please join us again. Bye, everyone. Thank you.